Hey, fourth graders, welcome back. Mrs. Lawson here, and I just wanted to tell you, you are doing an amazing job. So hold on one second. So claps for you fourth graders because we just finished another module. So we are about to start module B and that is focusing on volcanic eruptions. How cool is that? So let me go ahead and share my screen and we will go ahead and get started. So today, like I already said, we're starting with anatomy of volcanic eruption. So first things first, what are we learning about today? We are learning to use text evidence to draw inferences or to make an inference. So we know we are successful today when we can define what is an inference, do you guys remember? Then we have to refer back to details in the text and make an inference. So if you forgot, an inference starts with what the text says. So you gotta go in that story and pick out details. Then you add what you already know, what's in that brain of yours, and then you make an inference. So it's not something that you find directly in the text. It is a connection or an idea that is yours, but it ties back to what the text says. So our foundational skills today is prefixes. Where are prefixes located in a word? Good job, fourth graders. They're at the beginning of a word, but we're not focusing on just any prefix. We're focusing on prefixes from Greek and Latin. So that's other languages. We're borrowing words from them. So the ones we're focusing on today are trans and tella. Can you think of any words with those at the beginning? Yeah. All right. So let's start with a piece of the text today. A volcanic eruption transformed Iceland's landscape. So we're going to Iceland today and reading a little bit. But what does transformed mean? Well, that prefix trans means across, beyond, or changing. Does that help you at all? So what does transformed mean? Yeah, it's changing the form of what Iceland looks like. Good job, fourth graders. Now let's look at the other prefix. The telephone was ringing loudly and woke me up. I highlighted the wrong word there just to trick you, just to throw you off the scent. So the one that we're focusing on in this slide is this word right here, telephone. You know what a telephone is, right, fourth graders? Right, so let's look at what it is. The word tele actually means, or the root tele means, over a long distance. So, what does the word telephone mean? Yes, it is a device for sending messages over a long distance. So when you're calling people, you can call far away. Good job. So your practice today is going to be, you're gonna try and fit the right word into these sentences to make it make sense. And that'll hopefully be on Seesaw for you to practice today. All right, so let's go ahead and start on our vocabulary. So do you know what that first word is? Hmm. It's actually the word spewed. And let's look over here. We have a volcano in Hawaii spewing lava. So what could it mean, fourth graders? I heard somebody say, good job. It is to cast forth, to eject, or to gush. So it's gushing out of that volcano. Good job. What about this? So in our story today, they're gonna use the word vent, right? We know vents on the wall um, that let air in or out, but what about a vent on a volcano? Yeah, good job, fourth graders. A vent is just an opening. So a vent on a volcano is right here. It's what lets the lava come out. It's that opening on the volcano, good job. Okay, so we're starting off with a little poetry today. It's called Living with Lava. So lava, it squeezes out of a volcano like fiery black toothpaste. It, bury, it buries a road, a parking lot, and a wall. Lava, it steams in the tropical rain, it hardens in the Hawaiian heat, 
lava. Machines with grinding wheels crush it, and bulldozers with wide blades, lava. Men and women in work boots and hard hats mix it with tar. They build a road, a parking lot, and a wall. Lava. It squeezes out a volcano. So a lot of poetry makes you feel something. That's what's really cool about it. So how did this poem make you feel, fourth graders? What do you think? Yeah, there's some good ideas, some good emotions there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So anatomy of a volcanic eruption. What in the world does anatomy mean? It is the way that something is put together and the way it works. So we're gonna learn how in the world does a volcano erupt? So today we are starting with introduction. Eruption of icy, that's a big word, fourth graders. So here's a tip for you. I know that when you're reading, sometimes you get to big words too, and you can't look it up, right? So we know if it's an eruption of something, it's probably the name of a volcano. And like we already read, it's happening in Iceland. So this is just an Iceland name, like a name from there, that I don't know how to say. So I could look it up if that's something I want to know, or I could just say that it is E. I can use that first letter just to put it in there because it's not gonna change my understanding. I know it's a volcano and I know it's in Iceland. So let's just put it as an E there. And if you wanna know how to say that word, you can go look it up. I know I did because I was like, how in the world do you say that name? So let's go ahead and get my little arrow. And it says down here, Small earthquakes shook Iceland's southern coast for four months. Then on March 21st, 2010, lava began to flow from E volcano. By April 14th, another vent opened in the volcano. Magma inside E pushed its way through the dense rock and thick ice caps. Lava began to pour out Gas and steam shot tens of thousands of feet high into the atmosphere. Lava spewed from the volcano's crater. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of yellow words and I don't know what they mean, but if we look down here, they tell us what those are. So let's pause for a second. Up at the top, it said lava began to flow. So lava is magma that has reached the surface of the earth. So lava and magma are the same thing. Magma is just partially melted rock beneath the earth's surface. So magma is beneath the earth, and once it shoots out, it turns into lava. I wonder if you guys, did you already know that? Then down here, it says lava spewed from the volcano's crater. Now what's a crater? It is an indent in the top of a volcano from which lava flows, that makes sense. And melted the mountain's glaciers. Water rushed down the mountainside. It flooded farmland and wiped out bridges and roads, darkness covered the area for most of the day. So if we don't remember what a glacier is, that is just ice, right? So with the hot magma coming up, it melted that water and it caused some flooding, it's kind of crazy. So let's look at this question over here. What do you learn from the picture and text about the eruption? So they kind of go together. What do we learn? Airports all over Europe closed after the eruption of E. So eruption, the release of magma, rock, and ash from a vent in the Earth's crust. So this is that, I'm not going to tell you because this is what we're using. Sorry, fourth graders. Thick ash clouds make it difficult for pilots to see. So an ash cloud is a cloud of hot dust particles and rocks that is formed when a volcano erupts. Ash also damages jet engines. Approximately 100,000 flights were canceled. 10 million passengers were left stranded until air travel resumed on April 20th. It was the largest and longest airspace shutdown since World War II. So that was from 1939 to 1945. Okay, so I'm gonna pause my video here. Take a second, think. What do we learn from the picture here and from the text? Okay, so hopefully you took a second to realize, man, from the text we figured out, they had to shut down all of those airplanes. That's kind of a big deal. So 
that's one thing that we learned. And if we shoot back ooh, to this other page, if my mouse will work, we figured out when does this volcano erupt? What year? Yeah, March 21st, 2010. That wasn't that long ago. So that is when it erupts. That's another thing that we learned about. Also, that thing we talked about earlier with glaciers. What happened with the glaciers, fourth graders? Down here. It says lava spewed, that was that vocabulary word, from the volcano's crater and melted the mountain's glaciers. So it melted that ice. Now, what would happen to that ice if it gets melted? Gotta go somewhere, right? So water rushed down the mountainside, it flooded farmland and wiped out bridges and roads. Darkness covered the area for most of the day. So it is a sad day in Iceland. Iceland. So great job, fourth graders, looking back at that text and finding clues and details. So the genre, say that word, you sound fancy, genre. Yes, so the genre refers to the type of text, such as poetry, biography, where you're reading about somebody, fiction or nonfiction. What kind of story do we think that this is, fourth graders? Man, you can't trick you guys today. It is a nonfiction text because it's giving us information. We're learning about volcanic eruptions. Good job. So what happened before the volcano began to spew lava? Let's look back in the text. So it says, small earthquake shook Iceland's southern coast for four months. Then on March 21st, 2010, lava began to flow from E volcano. So what was happening before that earthquake, or what was happening before that volcanic eruption? Miss Lawson just kind of gave you the answer. There were earthquakes, right? So let's make an inference. Remember, we're make, using our brain to make a inference. Is this linked to, to the volcanic eruption? Those earthquakes, do you think they have to do with the volcano erupting? What evidence would support that? What do you think, fourth graders? Okay, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Do you think that they go together? Yes, they are linked. And what from the text tells us that they are? Honestly, guys, it is this one word right here, then. It's basically saying it's a sequence of events, like that structure of the text we've been learning about. It's saying there were earthquakes, then the volcano erupted. So they're saying they're linked together just by that one word. And we used our knowledge of text structure to make that inference. Good job, fourth graders. You're doing amazing. All right, let's keep moving. So what evidence from the text shows us that lava is really hot? I'm going to pause my video to give you some time to look back and find those clues. All right, fourth graders, hopefully you took the time to reread this page and figure it out. So it says down here, magma inside E pushed its way through the dense rock and thick ice cap. Lava began to pour out. Here's that thing that stuck out to me, fourth graders. Gas and steam shot tens of thousands of feet high into the atmosphere. Guys, it shot up and it was way up there in the sky. So it has got to be hot to shoot that far up in the sky. Also, it's saying it melted these thick pieces of ice. So in order to do that, it has to be hot. So did you realize you just made an inference? You used those clues from the text, those two text evidence. You used your knowledge to infer that magma is really hot. It didn't say that in the text. It didn't say magma is super hot. You used that fourth grade brain to make that inference. Great job. Now it is your turn. We've practiced and you're ready. So what can you infer from the text details about how the volcano affected everyday life in Iceland? So how did it affect the people living there? Include details from the text to support your answer. And as always, fourth graders, it was amazing reading with you today. Have a great day. Bye.